Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. He was born different from all other members of his tribe, and after being abandoned to die, he must prove that he is worthy of becoming the Primate King. Today we will recap the story of the 2015 movie, Animal Kingdom, Let's Go Ape. In a remote place in the savanna desert, a great tribe of monkeys celebrates the birth of their new prince. The king, Simeon, receives blessings from his monkeys as he waits to be called to meet his son. When Vladimir, his faithful advisor, finally shows up to give him news about the child, he informs him that there is a problem. The majesty goes to his wife's chambers and discovers that, instead of just one, the queen has given birth to two descendants. The first to be born is a weak and thin baby who, by right, would inherit the throne. The second child is a strong, healthy-looking child. Seeing that strange creature, the sorceress decides to intervene and advises Simeon to get rid of his firstborn. She claims that the child is a mistake of nature and her people will never accept her. Influenced by the witch, the king takes advantage while his wife is still sleeping and orders Vladimir to get rid of the defective infant. Later, when the queen wakes up, she asks about her children and, before dying, asks her husband to take good care of them. Then, Simeon introduces his youngest son to the rest of the people, stating that he is the crown prince, who is now called Vanya. Meanwhile, on the king's orders, Vladimir goes to the wolf's den and tries to feed him the infant but the baby clings to his fingers and won't let go. Looking at the little freak, the monkey considers to let him live, but changes his mind as he remembers that he owes allegiance to the king. Again, he tries to get rid of the child, and this time he manages to throw him into the wolf's mouth. However, during the fall, the ape ends up getting stuck in a vine and manages to free himself from the clutches of his predator. However, the animal does not give up eating him and manages to bite his right hand. Luckily, he is saved by a proboscis monkey who frees him from the wolf's clutches. The primate tries to teach the child to walk, but the little monkey cannot move because his right arm has stopped working. Thus, the ape takes a ride on the back of his new friend, Ian, and both walk together until Edward reaches adulthood. Generally, the two get along very well, except when Ian eats Edward's fruit. The young ape kept some figs, which were hidden in a hole covered by leaves. However, when he goes to look for them, Edward realizes that his figs are no longer there and pressures Ian to tell the truth. He believes that his friend stole the food, but soon discovers that the figs were taken by a mouse. He goes after it, in an attempt to retrieve the fruits, however, the disability limits his agility and Edward fails in the mission. To compensate for his physical limitations, he needs to think of new strategies. In that instant, he discovers that he can use the tree sap as a trap to capture the rat. However, before he can put the plan into action, Edward hears the sound of trumpets announcing the beginning of Coco Ball. Ian doesn't want to go to the games, as the two are often discriminated against and made fun of by the other monkeys. However, Edward manages to convince him to give those guys one more chance and they both settle into a tree to watch the show. While hanging from the vines, the players toss the ball from side to side. The goal of the game is to launch the object inside a skull that is hanging. As the most skilled of the entire team, Vanya is the first to hit the target and is applauded by everyone in the audience. The second round begins and the ball is thrown towards Ian. Excited to participate in the dispute, the monkey tries to catch the object, but ends up knocking the players down and causing the ball to fall into a hole. Annoyed by the game's interruption, some primates band together to beat up Ian. Meanwhile, Edward uses the sap to retrieve the ball. Curious about that new feature, the monkeys crowd around Edward. At that time, Vanya approaches and, after catching the ball, intends to continue the game. However, when he goes to throw the object, he realizes that it is stuck in his hand and enlists the help of his colleagues to get rid of it. In the midst of that confusion, the Coco Ball lands on King Simeon's head and, when trying to take it out, Vladimir ends up pulling out a tuft of the king's fur, leaving him bald. When asked who was responsible for that incident, Vladimir accuses his cousin Sergei as being the culprit. That night, Vladimir is summoned to the witch's hideout, who questions him as to why the defective child is still alive. The monkey claims that he complied with the king's orders and, after threatening him, the sorceress orders Vladimir to find a solution to that problem. Vanya was hiding and overhears the entire conversation. At that moment, he discovers that he has an older brother who should have been eliminated. Furious at the idea of losing the throne, the prince promises himself that he will take care of it. The next morning, Edward sees Ian talking to the birds. The monkey insists on talking about a white mountain, but the ape claims that such a place does not exist. Ian then reveals that the birds told him that the white mountain is real. As they argue, Sergei and Marcel appear to inform them that Edward has been summoned by the king. In front of all the apes, the king accuses Edward of practicing magic, but the ape claims that he has never practiced any kind of magic and says that all he does is a few tricks. 
With a handful of leaves, he makes a crown for his majesty, and soon after, he pours some water on a leaf, which allows Simeon to see his own reflection. Finally, Edward makes a throne for his king. As Simeon sways, the sorceress rushes into her lair and summons a swarm of insects to attack him. In the confusion, Simeon is knocked off his throne and thrown into the abyss. In the meantime, he manages to hold on to the tree roots and climb back up. Just as he was about to reach the surface, the roots break, the king suffers a sudden fall and faints. The witch claims that Edward is to blame for what is happening and says that the ape woke up the tree spirit to eliminate the king. So, Vanyu takes advantage of the situation to get rid of his brother. He grabs Edward by the neck and throws him down into the forest. Ian tries to save his friend, but is surrounded by other monkeys and prevented from acting. When Simeon wakes up, he scolds Vanya for her actions, but now it's too late. When Edward wakes up after the fall, he spots Ian, who has descended on a vine to rescue him. However, the rope was too short and the ape cannot reach his friend's hand. Deciding to survive on his own, he leaves and runs into the middle of the forest. The young monkey finds two giant ostriches and one of them has a bunch of fruit in its mouth. In an attempt to grab one of those fruits, Edward gets up and uses only both feet for support. At that time, he discovers that he is able to walk upright and his injured arm will never stop him from moving again. Suddenly, a pack of wolves appears and the trio has to flee. Edward can only run backwards and discovers that using only two feet, he is able to run much faster. By watching the way the ostriches run, the young ape is able to run forward and even outrun them. Minutes later, they invade a place where some rhinos feed. The animals also start running away as the apes watch them from the top of the tree. When they reach the end of the path, the rhinos begin to roll like armadillos and Edward is about to be crushed. In order to save him, Simeon jumps in front of him and uses brute force to stop the rhinos from crushing the ape. One of the animals escapes and rolls towards Edward, so the king doesn't think twice about throwing himself in front of him. When the danger passes, the young monkey gets up and discovers that Simeon sacrificed himself to save him. Before dying, the king asks him for forgiveness and claims that Edward is also his son. At that time, Vanya appears and takes his father's body home. Edward is still alone in the forest, but now he can't get Simeon's words out of his head. That night, the apes perform a farewell ritual for their late king and Vanya is about to be crowned. Even before becoming the leader of that group, the monkey gets rid of Vladimir, as he finds him guilty of not being able to eliminate his brother when he was still a baby. Sergei then takes his cousin's place and introduces Vanya's suitors. Now he will have to choose one of them to become his wife. However, after evaluating them, he decides to create a new law. From that day forward, all apes should be at his entire disposal. To complete the ritual, Vanya must eat his father's flesh, but before taking the first bite, he is interrupted by Edward, who wants to break with that terrible tradition. In order to prevent his father from being devoured, he takes advantage of the fact that all the monkeys have fled the thunder and, with Ian's help, drops the king's body in the forest. Then they go there to hide it. Edward throws some small stones to form a tomb, but Ian places a large rock over King Simeon's body and manages to hide it completely. At that moment, lightning strikes a bush and Edward discovers that he can tame fire. He holds a stick that contains a flame, until it starts to rain and the fire is put out. The storm gets more and more violent and a tornado starts approaching the tree. The primates try to hide, but Vladimir is expelled from everywhere. Upon entering the witch's chambers, the monkey is sucked into the eye of the storm, as is Edward. In the midst of that natural disaster, the ape spots dozens of other animals trying to survive, including a primate that has just separated from her family. Seeing her, Edward tries to reach her, but is thrown out. The female is thrown away, and when the monkey tries to help her again, they are both sucked in again. However, now Edward is ready. He tied his body to the trunk of a tree and, in this way, manages to avoid being carried away by the tornado. With the weight of the two monkeys, the vine breaks and they fall over the precipice. Edward holds the female ape and uses his legs to climb back to the surface. The storm dissipates, and when the primate wakes up, it slaps that weird guy. She prepares to attack him, but suddenly bursts into tears upon seeing that her family tree has been destroyed. When Ian appears, the monkey decides to run away and Edward abandons his friend to go after her. He pursues her across the valley and faces the most adverse challenges to reach her. Hours later, they finally meet and the primate introduces herself as Lucy. Seeing the monkey walking on both legs, she decides to learn to do the same. With Edward's help, Lucy soon learns to stand and together they contemplate the view from the top of the mountain. The ape tells that his family lives in the tree they are seeing and invites Lucy to go there and meet them. On the way back, they find a lake of lava and Edward takes a stick with fire to help them see the way. As they approach the tree, they are greeted by the apes, who are curious to know how he was able to tame fire. 
The young ape says that the forest is fantastic and says that there is no reason to fear it. At that time, Vanya appears and orders his brother to get rid of that torch. To show how friendly fire can be to him, Edward lights several sticks, but ends up causing an accident and causes a nearby bush to burst into flames. Then, the sorceress appears and claims that all the curses that happened in the kingdom were Edward's fault. The apes support her and expel the couple. With nowhere to go, they decide to invade the wolf's den and the ape uses fire to avoid being attacked by the animal. Afraid of the flames, the wolf decides to flee and the young monkeys conquer a safe and comfortable camp. Lucy orders Edward to get rid of that torch and he sets up a stone fence to stop the fire from spreading. That night, they kiss for the first time. Until then, there was no kissing among primates, but when they realize that it is a pleasant act, they continue, despite not finding any use for it. Upon observing the couple, the apes also adopt the practice and the witch invokes the tree spirit to reprimand them. In the following days, Lucy teaches Edward to hunt for his own food, this includes both fruit and other animals. Together they discover how to make fire and even manage to tame the wolf. As they cook dinner, the apes delight in that smell and the tree spirit manifests again to frighten them. Diego decides to follow that sound and discovers that the tree spirit doesn't actually exist. It's just a story to coerce the people. Realizing that she has been unmasked, the sorceress intends to eliminate him. But Diego manages to escape and reveals the truth to everyone. Revolted, the apes decide to abandon the tree and go their own way. Everyone except Gisela leaves. Only the female ape decides to stay, as she believes her place is next to Vanya. As it is still night and the people have nowhere to go, they decide to ask Edward for help. However, Lucy holds a grudge against those people and orders them to leave. After talking to his tribe, Edward decides to feed them just for that night, and the next morning, they will leave. Annoyed, Lucy agrees to this arrangement. With everyone gathered in the cave, they start singing and decide to have a party. For weeks, Vanya and Gisela watch the construction of the new village and feel abandoned by their people. In her hiding place, the sorceress prepares for her revenge. Months later, Lucy and Edward got married and are about to have a baby. While his wife rests, he helps the villagers with the construction and expansion of the village. By now, they have all learned to walk on two feet and hunt for their own food. Diego found coal and shows Edward that he can use that object to leave marks on the wall. Despite believing that this is of no use, Edward is proud of the young's discovery. Seeing the growth of the village, new primates appear to ask for shelter and food, but Sergei and Marcel banish them from there. At that time, Edward appears and tries to convince his colleagues to help those poor people, but Sergei feels entitled to intimidate him. While they were arguing, a swarm of locusts from the witch approached the village and destroyed the place. After the attack, the apes band together to go after the sorceress. So Lucy asks Edward to go help his brother while she helps the wounded. Together with his domesticated wolf, the ape runs towards the tree and tries to talk to Vanya before the other primates arrive at the scene. However, when Vanya appears, it's too late and his former apes are there to eliminate him. Gisela appears to defend her husband and Sergei decides to propose a deal. He assures him that if Vanya gives the tree to them, the apes will let him live. However, the new king decides to face them and Sergei orders his colleagues to destroy the tree. Due to the several blows with the axe, the sap starts to flow and Vanya is furious. He is very fond of the tree of his ancestors and does not intend to let it be destroyed. The young king attacks his people and is attacked back. Edward tries to stop the fight, but is knocked out. Sergei attacks Vanya with a torch but is easily knocked down and the fire ends up spreading throughout the tree through the sap that was spilled. While the tree is on fire, the traitor orders his people to hold the king while he delivers the final blow. However, Gisela manages to distract them. Meanwhile, Vanya breaks free and charges at his enemies. Amidst the chaos, the wolf goes to wake up Edward. When he realizes that Gisela's life is in danger, the young ape clings to a vine and enlists the help of the wolf to lift him up. In this way, he manages to take Gisela out of the fire. However, a burning log falls on top of him and the ape is trapped. He cries out for help, but all the apes run away when the tree is about to collapse. Along with the tree, the witch is eliminated, but Edward is saved by his brother. As they mourn the destruction of their former home, the brothers make amends and Vanya asks for forgiveness for having allowed power to blind him to the point of trying to eliminate his own brother. When they meet up with the rest of the tribe, Sergei starts to cause panic among the apes. He claims that now that everything is burned and they have nowhere to go, they will all die. At that moment, Edward looks at the sky and, seeing the birds, remembers the words of his friend. The ape claims that he knows a magnificent world, full of forests, surrounded by lakes and with fruits in abundance. At that moment, he makes the first act of hope in history and guides his people to the White Mountain. On the tortuous path they take to get there, Edward continues to nourish hope in their hearts, 
despite all the adversities they have to face. After long days of walking, the group finally arrives at the promised land and Edward discovers that, in fact, the White Mountain exists. There, he is reunited with his friend Ian and together they celebrate that victory. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.